Hi, and welcome to RESA Live. Today, we are gonna go over how to slope members in RESA floor. Um, basically, what we're gonna go for is, I took a little image of the finished product here. We're gonna go nice little roof slope here. This is a pretty big span, so it has a couple intermediate members. And then we've got another roof going in another direction. So I've got our model started here, and basically just a nice flat item here. So let's go ahead and look at the full model just to show you that. Now I did outline this already so that it's ready to go. Um, I also made some save selection states, which I'll also show you, so that uh, it would make this a little easier and a little bit, uh, a little bit quicker for everybody watching today. Um, so first thing I wanna do, I'm gonna go to my floor plan. And for sloping members, you can only do it on the uppermost floor uh, of the floors that you have in Risa floor. So I only have one floor on this model, so it makes it pretty simple. Uh, but what I'd like to show you is that you have multiple options for sloping members. Now there's this little tool here that's for sloping elements. And here you have three different options for roof definitions, and then you've also got a tab for elevating points. I'll show you a couple of these tools. Now, the first one is the roof definition. It's very similar. It's just how you want to define it. Uh, today, I'm going to show you basically showing a 4 and 12 pitch roof for this roof structure here. Now, you can leave this open if you'd like, and it would actually keep the tool open while you're performing your tasks, but I like to have a nice clean screen, so I'm going to have it turn off. Now, one thing I want to point out is when you're sloping points, what you really want to do is make sure that you have the proper elements selected before doing so. I'll show you an example of what you don't want to do. I'm going to do a 4 and 12 pitch. Now, I have all my elements selected. So, and right now, down in the status bar at the bottom left-hand corner, it says pick the first point of the roof starting plane. I'll click a point, and you'll see this plane show up, and basically, you just need to define a second point that gives you a plane for your base point. Now, it doesn't matter if you're at the very far end of your structure that you want it to be, or if you're immediately next to it, it just needs to be a point that defines that plane. Now, it's actually done it, but we're still in a plan view, so we can't tell. If I go to an ISO view of my floor plan, I can see this is definitely not what I wanna do. So let's go ahead and go back to my plan view here. And I'm gonna actually show you one of the other options for elevating points that actually sets everything back to zero. Under elevate points, I wanna choose the set elevation offset of all floor points to be zero. This basically says, okay, you know, I got all sorts of craziness going on. I wanna set everything right back to zero. I'm gonna hit apply, and it's gonna give me an error message or a warning message saying it did it. Now I can confirm this if I go to my ISO view again. I love that ISO view, um, but I'll go back to plane for actual modeling. Now, like I said, I actually did a few saved selections that you can actually pick up or save or retrieve from this sidebar over here next to your selection dialog. Now I have an east side slope. I can retrieve that. And basically it's this slope on the east side of my slope. And then I've also got a few others as well. What I'd like to do is show you first the west side slope. Now, this option here, actually I did this prior to saving all the members that I need, so I'm gonna go ahead and select those real quick. And what I'd like to show you is if I elevate this, if I do a slope on this roof section here, it's gonna choose my base plane, which I chose before over on this side, and it's gonna elevate all the points along grid C just like I want. Now, the problem is there are certain elements that will follow that because their end nodes are at the same point as the elevated points that are being lifted by this side. But there are some that aren't as well. So it could uh, actually slope properly or it could actually leave some items out. So it's, uh, again, it's one of those things where it's, it's pretty crucial what you actually have selected for when you're doing this. Now, I'll show you this method. Uh, with this part selected, I'm going to go to change elevation again, do my rise over run of 4 over 12. I'm going to apply it and apply it just like I did before, but it's going to be substantially different because of the elements I have selected. Now, after I define that plane with the second click, it's all done so I can go to my ISO view and see what it's done. Now, 
that actually looks pretty good. But if I actually turn everything selected and actually show a little render of it, you'll notice we've got a nice little dip right here that we definitely didn't want. Now it's because this point that defines this wall corner and this beam's end, this wasn't really linked to anything that got elevated over here. Now this wall panel here got elevated because its end node was part of that node. Now, because it went up, it also moved to the point of this member being attached to it. So you'll notice that depending on what's actually attached to the nodes that are being elevated and the elements that are being sloped, it could affect how your model turns out. Now I'm going to go ahead and go back to my plan view. I'm going to undo the operation that I was in. Actually, I wanna check that just to make sure everything is flat and back to where I was. But now if I go back to my plan view, turn my render off, I'm gonna actually choose the different selection, again, using that saved selection states, and I'm gonna choose the east side slope. Now, just by sloping the other side of the roof, now you'll notice because this member that before wasn't moving this point up, because this is part of the selection this time, it's actually gonna move that properly now. So I'm gonna elevate my points, do that same four and 12 pitch, apply, and then choose my base. When, uh, when I sloped up this side over here, this east side, it actually sloped up the walls, just like it did previously. Well, all the members in between are somehow related to these end walls, so they're all gonna actually elevate with it properly as well. Now, this is all fine. We actually sloped everything perfectly here the way we want to. But now what we wanna do is, we wanna slope this little section over here that's kind of our uh, California overframing section. Now it's not actually framed like that, but uh, basically we just wanna add this other uh, you know, hip roof here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go back to my plan view. Now I'm gonna leave everything the way it was because everything is sloped just the way I want. But what I'd like to do is go ahead and use my saved selection states again, obviously, because we're just trying to make it a little quicker for everybody. And what we're gonna do, and I have this one just to show you what section we're gonna be doing, but if we sloped this, like we saw in the previous one, uh, in the very first uh, iteration is that it would slope the entire roofing structure based on one point so that uh, it would uh, not be exactly what we're looking for. So what we wanna do is we wanna actually just bring up this ridge. Now I'll show you a couple different options. Uh, the first one we're gonna do just like before, we're going to select one side of it. Let's go ahead and pick over the north slope there. And I wanna slope just that section and perform it just like we did before by doing a rise over run and select our base points. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our full model view. You can do that or go to the ISO view. But one thing I wanted to point out is it looks okay, but at second look, this member here doesn't appear to be sloping well, it appears to be sloping where it should be actually flat until it frames into this other slope. So really doing a four and 12 pitch for this whole section has made this member actually slope, which is not what we want. So I'm gonna go back to my floor plan. I'm going to undo the last uh, action. And I'm gonna show you that we can actually just elevate the points of the ridge and it should hopefully pull everything up to the right level. Now, actually, if I do a redo, you'll notice the elevation here is an 8.333 feet. And at the other end of that beam is actually 9.1667. So it is actually sloping. Now, what I want is that ridge beam to be constant all the way across. So let's go ahead and make sure that it's flat again after I did my undo operation. That's zero, that's zero, perfect. So now what I wanna do is I wanna just elevate the points 9.667 so that everything is lined up perfectly for me. Now nicely, again, I did use my save selection states and I can choose just my ridge. And actually I like to look at my nodes as well because it just makes me feel a little bit more comfortable that everything is there. So like I said, we wanna raise all those points to 9.1667. So we're gonna go activate our drawing tools here 
and we're going to slope members. And like I said, that second tab there is elevate points. Now we want to set an elevation offset here, and we're going to put 9.667. I believe that's what we had. Nope, it is 9.1667. I was able to confirm that just by hovering over the point that I wanted everything to match. I'm going to apply it just like we talked about before. Now that's applied. Now I want to go, like I said, I want to go back to my ridge. I'm going to retrieve that selection state. Now I'm going to elevate the points. And like I said, we want that to be a 9.16667 and apply. Now that's going to apply to all the points and members that I had selected. Now, if I go back into my full model view, you can see it all looked good just like before, but now we have this nice uniform level here, just like we would expect it to be built. And it wouldn't look all kind of crazy. So the other nice part is once you get this model all complete and you have all your slopes the way you want them, you can actually take this into Risa 3D and maybe replace these with trusses per se. Now this section over here for this very long span, I don't think uh, trusses would be the greatest for this. Um, it's actually uh, a pretty long span there. So I wanna keep that nice and open and vaulted ceilings, but we could actually do like a truss system over here, which we have a truss generator in Risa 3D that could actually help us with that when we integrate over to Risa 3D. Now, I did wanna show you that on our webpage, we actually go over this in a section called the tips and tricks. Now, if you go to our webpage at risa.com, at the very top, you can click on learn. Now, if you look at this top bar right here, you'll see a little wand here for some magic because it's tips and tricks. Now going here, if I just type in, I believe slope, I've got a few different options, basically how to, how to flexible diaphragms work on slope roofs and so forth. Um, but what I'd really like to show you is that we actually have how to model a truss in Risa floor. And basically it's using the same application that I just showed you here today, but it, after you take it into Risa 3D, it explains how to use the truss template to replace those members if you wanna actually have trusses in there instead. Now this tips and tricks section is pretty handy for different, uh, obviously tips and tricks, but it can also give you uh, some updates as to different codes that have been added and so forth. It's kind of a handy little place to go. Also, if you do have any questions regarding sloping or anything else, please feel free to give us a call um, at RISA or you can send us an email to our support staff you can send it to support at risa.com and uh, you might uh, actually get a hold of me because I'll be uh, working in support. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, contact us. Also, uh, if you want to get more updates on Risa live events or any other Risa updates on our YouTube page, go ahead and click that bell to, and, uh, for notifications and subscribe to our channel.